All right, guys, so we're going to look at one more example of dealing with counting, permutations and combinations, all right? So in this example, I'm going to be looking at specifically permutations, and we're going to be looking at a class of seven students, all right? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to assume that there are seven chairs, and the question is, how many different ways can they be seated, all right? So seven chairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, seven people could be there. And then if one's there, that means there could be six here, which means there could be five there, and so on and so forth, which means we have seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Or in other words, seven factorial or seven in PR seven. All right, so if we go ahead and pull up our fancy smancy calculator to do that, then we can go seven math, and it's in the probability there. So we go over probability, and we go four exclamation point, and we get a total of 5,040 ways that they could actually sit in seven chairs. Okay? Now, this is just different organizations, all right? So next, we want to look at how many different ways they can sit together if we got those two girls in the class that always just have to, you know, you know who I'm talking about. There's always two girls that, that are inseparable. They're, they're going to sit together no matter what. All right? So let's consider that we got them together, and then everybody else can sit however they want. So essentially what we have now is we have six people, right? Because two seats are going to be tied up. It doesn't matter whether it's there or whether it's there or whether it's here or whether it's here. But no matter what, two sets are going to be tied up by one entity. All right, so really we're down to six possible ways, right? They could be seated there or in one of six different places. So in this case, we're going to do essentially the same thing. We're just going to go six NPR six to find out, you know, how many different ways they can sit if those two must sit together. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that first. So we'll go instead of seven, we want six which is 720. But now what we need to do is we need to remember that that would be considering that they're sitting there, but there's two different ways that they could sit inside those seats, right? You could have girl one here and girl two all the way down, or they could be switched. You could have girl two and girl one. So if I'm looking at how many different possible ways the seating could look, then I need to consider that, that there's two possible ways that each one of these 720 could turn out. So I multiply by two, and I get a total of 1,440 ways that people could sit in these seven chairs, assuming that those two have to sit together in, in whatever order. All right, let's go ahead and look at another question. Let's, um, let's now change it to a square table. Okay. Now to start with, we're going to assume that each side of the table is different, okay? So one side is right underneath the air conditioner, one's by the window, one's facing the board, one's uh, facing the monkey at the back of the room. I don't know, what, but whatever. Each side is different, okay? And so assuming that, how many different ways can the seating be arranged? Well, assuming that each side is different and therefore each seat is different, that means that, well, there's only seven students, right? Well, so then we're just going to say, okay, well, the blank seat could then count as another student. It really doesn't matter whether it's blank or a new student. That's going to change the way the seating could be. Because in a specific seat, let's say this seat, there are then a certain number of students that could sit there. Right? So it could be any number of seven students, or it could be blank. So there's actually eight possibilities for that chair. Now, once we know what that chair is, the next chair has seven possibilities because whoever sat there or a blank seat could not be in the next one. And the next one, six, five, four, three, two, one. So again, we have the same idea if we're just saying, okay, all the sides are different, every seat is different, then what's the possibility? So again, we're going eight in PR eight, which again is the same thing as eight factorial, which we can just do really quickly. And we get that there are 40,320 different ways that they could sit around the square table. All right? Um, now, what if we said, okay, what if the sides are not 
different? What if each of the sides is identical? Okay, well, then that meant, let's say that person one is here and person two is there. Okay, and no matter where, who else is in the other ones, you know, let's go one, two, let's take a specific setup. Five, six, seven, and then blank. Okay, so with this specific setup, it could be this way, but if we rotated everybody around the, the table, so if these two were sitting there, these two were sitting there, if everybody rotated around the table one, you know, 90 degrees, then if the sides are all identical, then this setup is identical to the setup we started with. Okay, this is most commonly used with round tables, but it could be done with a square table like this. Again, if we rotate another 90 degrees. So there's four different rotations, and if we're assuming that those are all the same, then there's actually not 40,000 different ways that we can set this up. We'd have to divide it by four, and then we would have 10,080 different ways that they could sit. Okay, so when you're reading a question like this, it's important to note whether you know rotations are going to end up giving you the same thing or if all the sides are considered different. If you're not sure, then best, best practice would be, okay, well, to write this and say if all seats are different, and then to write this if all sides are the same. I would imagine on an IB exam that they would be very, very clear about this. But if they aren't, this is a chance for you to point out that you really know what's going on, right? And if you're not sure if it's unclear, then the best thing for you is to have both answers down with an explanation so that they can see, yes, if they meant different, you got one answer. If they meant the same, you got the other answer. Okay, let's look at a different situation. Let's, uh, again, considering that all the seats are different, Okay, so still different. Let's, uh, let's say that one student, Mike, this is Mike here, student number one, he wants to sit by himself. So how many different ways can the seating be arranged? Okay, so again, we've got this table, but this time you've got Mike, and this seat then has to be the blank seat. So again, we've got kind of a pairing going on here, right? And so that has to be that way, okay? So if Mike sits by the blank chair, then you've got the other students, two, three, four, five, six, seven, who all can sit, you know, wherever they want. So what we can do is we can find out how many different ways these people are seated, okay? So these can sit wherever they want in those six chairs. So those six can sit in six different places, okay, so mix that up, which we already know that 6 NPR 6 was 720, because we did that before. But then Mike could sit in eight different positions. So Mike, if Mike was here, then you have 720 different ways that those can be seated. If Mike was in the next seat, then you now have another 720 ways, okay, with the blank seat there. If Mike is in this seat here, that one's blank, so you have another 720 ways. So essentially, Mike could be in eight different seats with the blank seat being by him. So we need to take that 720 and multiply it by eight, and we get 5,760 different possible ways that Mike could be sitting by himself. All right, um, and then uh, let's, let's consider one last thing, uh, actually two last things. How would this be different if we said, okay, this is no longer a square table, this is a circle table? And so we got a circle table where all the seats are the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So Mike sitting by a blank chair, right? How is this gonna change the situation? Well, a couple of things. Number one, we no longer have to consider the rotations of Mike, right? Because all of Mike's seats are gonna be exactly the same. So if we consider Mike and this chair as being blank, then we end up with 720 seatings. But do remember that the blank chair could have been on the other side of Mike, in which case we need to consider another 720 seatings. And so in the end, we get 1440 different ways that they could sit with Mike sitting with a blank chair, because the blank chair could be on either side of Mike. Okay, um, and one more question dealing with this. Let's, uh, let's say Rama doesn't want to sit alone, 
Okay, so she's worried about the fact that in this, we're going back to the square, she's worried about the fact that she might be sitting alone and she won't have a buddy to work with. Okay, so Rama does not want to sit alone. The question is, what is the probability that she will be alone? Okay, well, it doesn't really matter whether it's Rama or Mike, right? We already calculated for Mike that there were 5,760 ways that he could be alone. Okay, so it must be the same for Rama. There's 5,760 ways she could be alone. And then how many total possible ways could they be seated? Well, they could be seated, remember, in, uh, where was it, this one right here, 40,320. So four zero three twenty different possible ways, and so if we take that and we calculate five seven six zero divided by four zero three twenty, we get point one four two eight five seven, which is one out of seven. If you don't believe me, then you go into your math, but you should know the decimals for seven but we could go math and just say, turn it into a fraction for me, please. And it does, and it gives us 1 7. Now, you probably didn't need to do this, right? Because there's always gonna be one person sitting by themselves. And so one of the seven students is gonna be alone. So what's the probability that Rama will be alone? Well, it's, it's gotta be somebody. So one out of seven chance that it's actually her. Okay, if you want to write that as a percent, of course, that would be 14.3%. IB likes it in three, di three, uh, three digits, but it, there's nothing wrong with writing a probability as a fraction. All right, so that's pretty much all I have to share with you on this question. So hopefully that's enough to get you started on your, your homework and such. Cheers.